we definitely talked about a few of the themes that I'm looking at. Um, I'm, I'm focusing less on particular countries and, 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 and more on big, bigger trends, I guess. Um, and, you know, we talked a lot about it, uh, about various things like the, what, I, what I expect to be a, a shift in the power balance between the global north and the global south. Um, I think what I'm keeping my eye out for, and I don't know that I, I I'm keeping my eye out for, um, I think that the, 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 the narrative that we've seen over the past couple of years of democracy versus autocracy um, is, is going to shift dramatically. Um, I think that, um, I think we're in a period right now where, um, where we're seeing a real exhaustion of all the models, the proposed models uh, for governance. Um, I think that, uh, you know, democracy has shown uh, some wear and tear in the US, Brazil, uh, Eastern Europe, uh, El Salvador, even in India, um, in, 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 in that sense. But, you know, autocracy hasn't been doing too well either, right? Uh, whether it's in Iran or in China more recently, Russia. Um, and so I think that we're going to be seeing a lot more um, creative solutions being offered, both on a sort of bird's eye level, similar to what I mentioned about reparations um, and loss and damage, ways of repairing and, and uh, restoring some equity uh, to the global relationships, but also from the ground up in terms of social movements. Um, you know, the, during the pandemic, the state really demonstrated, uh, or, the, or the pandemic demonstrated that there's still a role for the state um, in terms of interventions, and that when the state wants to do something, it can. Um, I think that uh, comes on the heels of a lot of uh, questioning of the neoliberal Washington consensus and things like that. Uh, I don't think necessarily state capitalism in a Chinese model or a Russian model necessarily works uh, any better. And so I think that, um, you know, we, we, we might be in a period of history. And, and, and I think as some of the backlashes in terms of nationalism or illiberal democracy in Eastern Europe, they haven't worked out that well either. So. I think, um, I think we're in a period where the, the field has been leveled in terms of the competition for governance models um, and, and in a way that creates more opportunities for new ideas to become, to move from the margins to, the, to, to becoming more respectable and, and part of the more conventional mainstream discussion. I don't necessarily know what those are, um, but I, I feel like we might be really surprised in the next year or two or three um, by where things come from and, and how our discussions uh, don't resemble what they did a year ago um, and, and how we're discussing things very seriously that a year or two ago would have been considered fringe or, qu or crank uh, for the better and worse, right? Decou decoupling with China was a fringe a fringe argument uh, four or five years ago. Now it now it's uh, gaining some momentum, uh, but I think more creative uh, bubbling up from from the ground up uh, of ways of 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 making democracy more responsive, of making the global economy and national economies more just and more equitable. Um, I think we'll see stuff like that. Uh, you know whether or not it will have an impact, whether or not it will gain traction. I don't know, but I, I do think we're, we're gonna see things like that bubbling up um, in ways that again, even if they don't overturn everything that we've come to take for granted, uh, will add things that, that can have a meaningful impact. So I, I think that's sort of uh, keeping an eye out for, maybe uh, due to wishful thinking and optimism, but, uh, but I do think that there is some power to that.